Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different, but hopefully really fun. We are going to be tier ranking every sewing project that I've ever made, dating all the way back to when I started sewing about five years ago. Now, I've been wanting to do a tier ranking video for a while. Um, I'm sure like everyone else has noticed, tier ranking has been a really big trend on YouTube for a long time. I'm a little bit late to join the party, but I thought it would be really fun to kind of rank all of the sewing projects I've ever done for a few reasons. Firstly, I'm getting to the point where I have a lot of projects in my collection and and some things that I made several years ago I'm just not wearing very often, especially some of the things I made when I was newer at sewing. And I do want to declutter some of these projects soon, but before I get rid of them, I thought it would be fun to let them have their final hurrah here on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to be ranking these projects based on three considerations. First of all is how much I like the style and design of the finished piece. So this is like, do I like the fabric I chose? Do I like the style? Do I really like the aesthetic of the design? Secondly, I'm going to consider how often I wore these pieces, so that will factor in. And then thirdly will be how well made they are. So I'm hoping this video can be a little bit educational because I'm going to try to explain where I went wrong with some of these projects. And hopefully that can help you guys learn and avoid making the same kinds of mistakes that I made when I started sewing. Now, before we dive into it, I did want to quickly acknowledge the lower quality in today's video. Unfortunately, I smashed my camera recently and it is out of commission. So I am filming today on my phone. Also, I'm having a few problems with my computer, so you might hear some background noise. So I do apologize about the quality of the video today. I'm hoping to get back on track with a new camera soon. Okay, let's get started with some ranking. I think this is going to be really fun and I'm kind of excited to see the results here. Okay guys, so here is my ranking system. We have five categories, so let's go through the categories. At the bottom, the worst category is unwearable. This is for projects that are so bad that in my opinion, they're basically unwearable. So that is the worst category. Then we have exit the red carpet. And to me, these projects are ones that I didn't do my best work on, um, but there might be one or two redeeming things about them, so they're not the worst of the worst. Then we have the Welp You Tried category, and this is a middle-of-the-road category. To me, these are projects I feel lukewarm about. They're neither the best nor the worst. They're just sort of in the middle. And for these projects, you can tell there was an idea behind them, but maybe the execution or the wearability just wasn't there in the end. Then we have the category It's a Vibe, and these are for projects that turned out really well, and I wear a lot and I like them. They're just not the absolute favorite things that I've ever made. And finally, the best of the best is the Lifetime Achievement Award category. So these are projects that I'm so proud of. I think I deserve some sort of Lifetime Achievement Award for making something <laughs> so amazing. So pretty self-explanatory. We're not going to do this in any order whatsoever, just the order the pictures happen to be in. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, so first up I have this pink cutout summer dress I made out of a McCall's pattern. And it's made out of this lightweight coral pink cotton poplin fabric. As you can see, it's got some amazing shape to it. Like it's just got these really fun cutouts. I think this dress has to go in the Lifetime Achievement Award. So we're starting off strong for a few reasons. A, I think it's really well made. I fully lined it and I love the pattern and the way it fits. I also love the aesthetic of it. I think it's so cute, like way cuter than anything you could find in a store. And it looks like a really modern kind of silhouette. And then C would be that I have worn this dress so much despite the fact that I just made it this past summer. It's already become one of my most worn dresses of all time. So I think that says a lot. Okay, so next up I have this uh, statement dress and I made this from the Afghan dress sewing patterns from Folklore Patterns and I made this a couple years ago when I had more bohemian kind of style. Um, this dress for me is really hard to place because I love the design of it aesthetically but I have never worn it out because it's just a huge statement and, and it's definitely a lot. So because of that I think I'm gonna have to put it somewhere near the bottom. Um, 
I think I'll put it in Exit the Red Carpet because I love the aesthetic of it, but practically for me, it's not something I like to actually wear out. I will give it bonus points because it's really well made. So I do think it's really cute in that sense. So next up I have this tie blouse that I made from the Paper Cut Patterns sequence blouse pattern. And I made it from a viscose from Atelier Brunette. In theory, I love their fabrics, but I think this is a good example of a situation where I like the fabric in terms of its design, but I don't know if I necessarily like the fabric for me to wear as a garment. I don't want to bash paper cut patterns as a company because I'm sure they have lots of wonderful patterns and they seem like a great brand, but this pattern was not for me. I think I was initially attracted to the idea that it could be worn multiple ways, back to front, tied in different ways, but in practicality, the ties are way too big for me. I think the fit isn't the best because it's designed to be worn multiple ways. It just doesn't really fit the bust very well. You know, overall, I just really don't like this blouse and I've tried to wear it out a few times and I've just regretted it every time. So for me, this is going in the unwearable category. <laughs> okay, so next up I have this Stitch Witch Patterns um, Tudor blouse and I made this one out of a white double cotton gauze. Now, I love the idea of, of this. I love the aesthetic of it so much and the double cotton is really soft and lovely against the skin. My couple issues with this one, I think the cut of the sleeves on this pattern are maybe just ever so slightly off. Either that or I needed to play around with the elastic a bit more because the sleeves don't stay on me that well. Or the other thing I don't love about this top is the fact that I lined it in just like a plain non-stretch cotton. I think the feeling of the non-stretch white cotton lining the double gauze is a little bit odd because the double gauze is soft and it has some stretch but the white cotton that I lined it with doesn't have any stretch so I think I should have lined it with the same fabric that I made the main body out of. So for that reason, it goes in the whelp you tried category because clearly there was a good idea there and I was on the right track, but a few things held it back from being the best. Okay, so next up here, I have this blue linen dress and I made this one out of the Victory Patterns Trina dress pattern. It's made of this gorgeous, very lightweight blue linen fabric and I love the design of this dress. I think the dramatic sleeves are great. The tie front bodice is really unique and I like the thick ties. I've worn this out a lot in the summer. I wouldn't say it's like my go-to dress. I do wear this when I want something a little bit special. And so for that reason, I think it has to go in. It's a vibe because I definitely love this project. I think it's really beautiful, but I haven't worn it out quite as much as some of the other projects we'll talk about. Okay, so now we're going to talk about this um, black rayon dress I made. This was a thrift flip where I transformed a black rayon floral dress from the 90s into something more modern. And I used the Chloe dress pattern to make this pattern. And I haven't worn this dress very often since I've made it. In fact, I haven't worn it that much at all. I think the reason is that... I wished when I was making it that I could make it a little bit longer, but I didn't have enough fabric. I think it's pretty well made overall, but because I was reusing fabric from an existing dress, some of the um, cuts and some of the pieces I made are a little bit off grains. I can tell the dress isn't cut perfectly, so that does bother me a bit. But I do love the aesthetic of this dress, so I think taking all of that together, it has to go in the whelp you tried category. Okay, next up, let's talk about a project you probably haven't seen on this channel before. This is a wrap skirt I made. This, I think, was the second thing I ever made when I started sewing. And I don't know why I chose the hardest projects for myself when I started sewing, because while this skirt is a simple cut, the fabric I chose is like a slippery crepe. So I can't believe I managed to get such a nice result, honestly. So from the outside, this skirt is beautiful. Like the cut of it's really nice and the fit's great. I think the color I chose isn't the best for me. This kind of like pale pinky nude, it's pretty similar to my skin tone. So I think if I had a ton of events to go to, I might find myself wearing this, but otherwise it's a little too formal for me. Now, the number one thing about this project that I don't like is that I didn't finish any of the raw seams on the inside. When I was new to sewing, I didn't really quite understand how to finish seams. And by the end of the project, I thought it was too late to finish the seams. So because of that, the fabric is unraveling a lot. So the skirt isn't really going to last. Um, I could go back and finish the seams now, but I just don't 
like it that much, to be honest. So I think because of that, it's going to go in the unwearable section, mainly because the inside is not up to my standards. Okay, let's talk about this Colorblock linen tank top. I made this a few years ago. You probably haven't seen it on the channel recently. It's basically a yellow and orange color block tank top. I used a Mimi G pattern as a base and I went from there and I fully lined it in a white cotton. So I'm happy I took the time to line it so it, it's not see-through or anything. I haven't worn this a ton and I think the reason is because it's pretty big and because of that, I feel like I don't feel secure when I wear it, but it's too bad because I love this style and I think it's really cute. I would make something like this again. But taking all that into consideration, I think it's going to have to go in the whelp you tried category. Okay, this is another one you might not have seen on my channel. This is a wrap linen dress made of white linen. I think this was my third project I ever made. And I was inspired at the time by these pictures of these white linen wrap dresses I was seeing girls wearing when they were vacationing in like Europe and things like that and I wanted to recreate it. Where I went wrong here is I chose a really heavy weight linen, like really heavy. <laughs> I think I thought that the heavy weight linen would be less see-through and I, so I didn't have to line it because the idea of lining something was really intimidating at the time. But because it's so heavy, it doesn't have that breezy look. It almost looks like a lab coat <laughs> when I wear it, um, which is too bad. The fit is perfect. So this is, um, I think it's either a Butterick or McCall's pattern. I'll have everything linked below, but this pattern fits me really well. So at least I know the pattern's great. And I did a good job finishing this considering how new I was at sewing, but I just never wear it because I find the linen to be pretty thick for my preferences. So because of that, I'm gonna put it in the unwearable category. Okay, so next up is another dress. This is a slip dress that I made from a vintage rayon fabric and I used a 1940s sewing pattern. And it's got some princess seams on the front, which I think gives it a nice shape. But again, I chose a size of pattern that was a good two or three sizes too big for me. And I had to kind of try to refit the dress. But again, I was new at sewing and I wasn't that good at fitting things, especially princess seams. I'd say overall the fit is like acceptable. It looks good when it's on, it's not perfect, but I do really like the finished design. And I didn't think it would be one that I would wear all the time, but I have gotten a lot of wear out of this dress. So I'm gonna put it in the it's a vibe category. Okay, let's talk about this two-piece green linen set. So the top is made from Stitch Witch Patterns, Tudor Blouse Pattern, and the bottom is just a tiered skirt that I made myself, just gathering fabric to make tiers. They're made out of this really lightweight green linen. I've worn them together, I've worn them separately, I've gotten a ton of wear out of these pieces and I just love how they look. This is one of those projects that came out exactly how I envisioned. The fit is great, the quality is great. So this is definitely going to have to go at the top and I always get a lot of compliments when I wear this so that's saying a lot too. Okay let's talk about activewear. So I have this pair of pink leggings that I made and this was my first foray into activewear. It's made from the Seamwork Tino leggings pattern and the pattern is amazing just like ready to wear activewear and I like the fabric I chose to it was the matte activewear knit from blackbird fabrics. I think I got a great result overall I will say I'm not a leggings girl um, Regularly, so whether it's like store-bought leggings or leggings I make I just don't wear leggings a lot I don't find them comfortable as a rule So because of that I haven't worn these a lot and my pair has a lot of seams and whatnot So they are a little bit less comfortable because of that. So overall, I think I'm gonna have to put these in exit the red carpet Okay, let's talk about this yellow wrap dress. This is a McCall's sewing pattern and I was really attracted to the ruffly skirt and the interesting sleeves. At the time, I was definitely having a ruffle moment, <laughs> but I'm kind of over ruffles now. So this is one of those projects that is like beautifully made. Every seam is perfect. Everything looks amazing on the inside. It's so high quality, but I just don't like this dress. <laughs> I don't like the yellow color on me. I don't wear a lot of yellow, so I'm not sure why I thought I would need a bright yellow dress. The fabric combined with the silhouette makes a huge statement and I just don't have that many occasions to wear something like this. It's also crazy short. This pattern is definitely designed for someone who's 5'4", 5'3", or shorter. I'm 5'6", and you can see way too much in the front when I wear this wrap dress. So for that reason, I've never worn this. I'm going to try to sell 
this dress and a couple of my other pieces that are really well made that I just don't like. I think someone out there who's shorter than me and loves yellow would absolutely adore this dress but it just wasn't the right dress for me and I've never worn it. So it's going in the unwearable. Okay, next up, I'm curious if you guys remember these linen pants. They were one of the first projects I featured on my channel. These are a paper bag waist style pant made from the Megan Nielsen opal pants pattern. And I love the pattern. It's really great. It's really simple, perfect for beginners. And I made it out of a heavyweight teal colored linen. I like the color. I think it's fun. I get a lot of wear out of these pants. They're the perfect comfy pants for when I want to wear something other than sweatpants, but I don't want to wear jeans. I love the elastic waistband. The fit's perfect. The only thing I would say if I'm being really picky is I wish I'd use more of a medium weight linen instead of a heavyweight but I think that's just a personal preference thing. Oh, I'm kind of debating between the top two categories here. I think they have to go in the It's a Vibe just because they're nothing that special, but I have worn them so much and they're really well made. Okay, let's talk about the other active wear I've featured recently, which is this set. I have the jacket pictured. It's this active wear jacket and the matching leggings. Um, the jacket is made from a JLE soft shell jacket pattern and the leggings are that seamwork Tino legging pattern. Oh, this is hard to say where it should go. So the jacket is really well made. It was a lot of work to make and I love how it came out with all the color blocking. And I do wear the jacket a lot because I find it really comfortable. The leggings, I don't wear as much for the same reasons that I previously mentioned for my other leggings, but I love the design and I always get a lot of compliments when I wear this set out. The set as a whole is probably going to have to go in the it's a vibe category because I do really think it's a great design and I have worn the jacket a lot so I do think it deserves that recognition that it was a successful project overall. Okay let's talk about one of my most recent projects. It's this blue floral dress I made from a 1970s sewing pattern. The dress is fully lined, which I'm really proud of. It's got a contrast blue collar, which is made of some bias binding, which was a lot of work. The fit is great. I tried the fit a couple different times and really tried to get the best fit before I made it. I have worn this dress so much this fall and winter. So I think for that reason, it has to go in the Lifetime Achievement Award. When I see this dress, I just get so happy. And there's really been so many different occasions I can wear this dress to. So it's very versatile as well. Well. Okay, so this blue tank top I self-drafted. I wanted to try to replicate my favorite H&M tank top and I made it out of a Blackbird Fabrics bamboo rib and I love this tank top. It's really simple, but it's one of those pieces I wear all the time. I think it has to go in lifetime achievement because if I'm being objective, it's probably my most worn make of all time. I throw it on under sweaters and cardigans. I wear it out in the summer on its own. So it was definitely a big success for me. So yeah, it has to go at the top. Okay, next up, let's talk about some turtlenecks I made. I made two of these, but I just chose a picture of one. These are made from the Nico, the True Bias Nico top and dress pattern, and they're made from some cotton jersey knit. So while I love the idea of these, the fit is pretty tight because I don't think my fabric had high enough stretch percentage for this project, unfortunately. <laughs> so that's my fault. But they are really, really well made. Like the sewing is perfect. The seams are perfect. So it is a little bit too bad. Um, I'm going to put these in. Oh, if I'm being fair, they probably have to go in unwearable. <laughs> um, because I really can't wear them. I can't get my head through, but they're so well made that it, they would fit someone smaller than me really well. So I might try to sell these as well. Okay, another top I don't know if I've ever featured on this channel. It's this velvet blue drapey top I made from a 1930s sewing pattern. I made it as like a holiday top and it was early on in my sewing career and it's made out of stretch velvet. <laughs> So I had a lot of issues plague me when it came to this project. Firstly, I'd never sewn with stretch velvet. I really didn't know what I was doing at all. And I think it shows because the project kind of stretched out. Secondly, again, I wasn't that good at choosing my size. So I had a pattern that was like definitely a few sizes too big. So I had to take in the side seams. I would love the chance to remake this pattern in a size that actually fits me because I do get a lot of inspiration from the 1930s. And the sleeves on this one are just to die for. They're so dramatic. <laughs> but in truth, I haven't worn it very much, maybe just a couple times at Christmas. So because of that, I think it's going to go and exit the red carpet because it's not a disaster. 
but it's very close to a disaster, but I still love the style of it. So another recent project is this fall floral jacket. I just uploaded a video about this and I used the Ilford jacket sewing pattern to make this. It was a really simple sew and it's pretty well made. I took some time to do some bias finishing on the inside, which looks beautiful. I did have some issues with fraying, so there are a few errors where the fabric is fraying away. You can always, you know, check out that video if you want to learn more, but I love the design of this jacket. I think overall it's really well made and I've worn it a lot and I just love it. So I think it has to go in the it's a vibe. I feel like it's a little bit too new for me to claim that it's a lifetime achievement award, but it definitely could be. So next up is another skirt and this is one of my first sewing projects. I don't know if you guys remember when those like crossover jeans were really popular. Well, I followed an online tutorial on how to kind of make the waistline of your jeans have that crossover look. And I converted a pair of thrift store jeans into this skirt. I mean, I wanna give myself credit for <laughs> trying to do something new that I wasn't that good at, but I don't really like this look. I think I was just following a trend and my sewing skills left a lot to be desired. Like this is not well made at all. It's probably going to fall apart. So for that reason, it has to go in the unwearable. Okay, here's another project I don't think I've ever featured. This was my first sewing project of all time and it's a floral blouse that I made out of this crinkle cotton fabric. I mashed up a couple of different patterns that I found online, which was pretty bold of me considering I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and this shirt, the design idea is so cute and I still love it, but it's just so poorly made. The sleeves are inserted back to front. I didn't understand how to make a facing. The buttons are two different lengths, so it's definitely a mess. But I have to give myself credit, I chose such a hard first project. I was modifying patterns and I even made this placket with these covered buttons and I made the little button loops out of the fabric itself. So I tried really hard, but this is completely unwearable. It doesn't fit well and when I wear it, I can tell that it's riddled with mistakes. So sorry, but it has to go at the bottom. <laughs> Okay, next let's talk about these green jeans I made. These are from an emerald green bull denim fabric. So I used a grasser pattern as the base and kind of went from there. And I made a mock-up so the fit is really nice. It was my first time sewing with denim and it was really fun and I even did some contrast top stitching. I have worn these jeans a lot. They're my go-to jeans when I want to do something a little bit fun. I think they're really well made too. So they definitely have to go in the Lifetime Achievement Award category. Okay, so let's talk about my quilted coat. I have talked about this one a lot on my channel. So this is made from the Hovia quilted coat pattern. I started this several years ago and I kind of slowly worked on it over the course of a, a couple years, which I know is a very long time. I quilted all the fabric together by myself. It was my first time quilting and I really had fun with it. Whenever I was getting tired of working on it, I would put it aside and then when I was feeling re-inspired, I would get it out again. This is my number one most worn piece of all time. I know I said the tank top was, but I'm pretty sure the coat is uh, now that I'm thinking about it. So this has to go in the Lifetime Achievement Award. The fabrics I chose are perfect. The fit is perfect. The construction is really great. I get a lot of compliments on this coat. It's comfy, it's warm, it's practical with the big pockets and I just adore it. So. Definitely one of my favorite projects of all time. Okay, let's talk about this Marlowe sweater. This one is made from a double knit fabric I got from Mood Fabrics. So it's teal on one side, on the outside, and light blue on the inside. Now, if we're going just off the aesthetics of this, I love it. I love the crop design, the v-neck, the big buttons. It's perfect to throw on. And I do wear it quite often. But the thing about this is that the inside raw edges bother me so much. I wasn't thinking about the raw edges that much when I made it because most knit raw edges are no big deal. But because this is a double knit, the edges are fraying so much on the inside and I think it looks really bad and especially because it's a cardigan and I wear it open. If one of the sides was to flip open when I wear it, it just looks horrible <laughs> and homemade but not in a good way. So I think because of that it has to go in the whelp you tried category because you know, there was a good idea there, but the, the execution wasn't great. I would definitely make this again, and I think I could get a really nice result with a different fabric and different seam finishes. Okay, time for more turtlenecks. So I just finished these projects and I haven't even featured them on my channel yet, but I just finished making these turtlenecks out of a bamboo rib fabric, the same one I used for my tank tops. 
I made this orange one and I also made a white one. And this was my attempt at getting some redemption on that True Bias Nico top pattern. These are much stretchier than the other ones I made. So the fit is great. I'm happy about that. But I don't know why these just don't feel as well made as the other ones. Maybe because the fabric I was working with was stretchier, which just means that more errors can be introduced into making it. They don't feel quite as well made as the other ones. So I think because of that, it has to go in the whelp you tried because they're not quite perfect. And especially around the neckline, that kind of bothers me a little bit. So I'm still on my quest to make my perfect turtleneck. So another project I don't think I featured on this channel, I made it when I was very new to sewing. It's this butterfly blouse pattern and it's 1930s inspired. And I believe the pattern brand is called Decades of Style. And I actually made it out of authentic 1930s cotton fabric, which is just unbelievable. I was so inspired by the 1930s at the time, hence a lot of my early projects were made from vintage sewing patterns. And I still love this project. The issue I have with with it is I don't think I did a very good job gathering the crossover tie in the front. It just looks a little bit messy. But my main issue with this one is that I used bias binding all along the bottom edge of the blouse to finish it, which is what the pattern calls for. But this cotton is so sheer and lightweight and I used a, a heavy like polyester binding, the type you would just buy at the store. And because of that, the binding lies very oddly when you go to tie this. So again, this is a project that I plan to fix. So I love the aesthetic of this one so much. I think it's so beautiful. But for now, the way it is, I do think it has to go and exit the red carpet. Okay, so this one may come as a surprise. This is a long sleeve gathered top made from a face print fabric from Mood Fabric. I love this pattern of fabric and I want to buy this fabric again to get some redemption because spoiler alert, I do not like this top. So it's going down here. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Um, first of all, the fit is horrible. I used a simple gathered blouse pattern to make this. It was an older pattern and it's too small for my upper body and I find it uncomfortable. The sleeves are too short. And then it's also not gathered enough around the neckline to give it that billowy, blousey look I was looking for. It just looks a little odd. It almost gives me like clown blouse vibes, but not in a fun way. <laughs> so because of that, it's going down at the bottom. Okay, another summery dress. This one is made from a block print fabric I got off Etsy. I believe the seller is based in India. And I love this lightweight summery cotton. It's perfect for wearing on really hot days. And I do really like this pattern as well. I'm blanking on the name, but I'll link it below. It's got a gathered neckline and it's got like loose billowy sleeves and the tiered skirt. I have worn this dress a ton because I find it's very easy to just throw on on hot summer days and I love the vibe of it so much. My one complaint is that I think the neckline lays a little bit weird in such a structured fabric like cotton but despite that complaint I think it still has to go in the lifetime achievement award because I just love it that much and I've worn it so much. So now I want to talk about the paper cut patterns Copelia wrap cardigan pattern I made. This version is slightly modified to have wider sleeves that are gathered at the wrist and it's made of this loose kind of eyelet cotton fabric, which I love. Now, I love the way this looks, but I have found that I haven't reached for it as much as I wanted to. I think it's a little bit small. I wish I had made it one size up and then it would have been perfect. And for me in my climate, I just find there's not a lot of weather days where this would be appropriate. And our in-between seasons are pretty short, so there's not a lot of occasions where I'd need a lightweight layer like this. Unfortunately, even though this is definitely a vibe, I feel like it has to go... No, you know what? I love the design so much, I do think it has to to go and it's a vibe just with the caveat that I haven't worn it as much as some of the other pieces in this category. Okay, let's talk about this. This is the Anna Allen Patterns Anthea blouse and it's a puff sleeve button up blouse and I made mine out of a rust colored crinkle cotton. Love the fabric, can't recommend enough. It's from Blackbird Fabrics. It's breathable and lightweight. And I objectively like the aesthetic of this blouse, but I will say in practicality, I haven't worn it that much. 
I think the sleeves are a little bit too statement for me. I was picturing wearing this one to work, but I just think it's a little bit bold for my preferences. So I would really only wear it for a night out or a day out, which is not very often, honestly. Because of that, I think it's gonna go in Welp You Tried. <laughs> okay, let's talk about this. This is a boiled wool sweater I made from the named clothing Talviki sweater pattern. It's got some great design features. It's got these interesting darts in the front and back, which shape the neckline. I love this pattern. I think the issue was the boiled wool. I was so determined to make a sweater out of boiled wool, but in reality, it's not that comfortable. It's really, really hot. So, so I rarely find myself needing to reach for something this warm. And I do think the boiled wool has a way of looking not so put together. So it's just not my favorite. I think this is a case where the fabric and the pattern weren't matched that well together. So I wouldn't say it's completely unwearable. I think it belongs in Exit the Red Carpet. Okay, next up we have another blouse from my bohemian style era a few years ago. It's made from this beautiful floral cotton from Mood Fabrics that has gold flecks in it. And I forget which pattern I use, but I'll link it below. It's one of the big four patterns. And basically it's this bohemian style blouse. It's got a keyhole neckline and these wide sleeves and a gathered um, under bust area. This is an example of a project that again, I like the idea of in theory, but in practicality, I don't reach for it that much. It is really well made. I line the bodice beautifully, so it's gorgeous. But for me, I don't wear it that much. So again, I think it has to go in Welp You Tried. This might be another one I try to sell because it is beautiful, but it's just not for me. Okay, moving along, we have this pair of linen shorts that I made from the Megan Nielsen opal pattern. So similar to how I made the pants that are over here from that pattern. I also made a pair of linen shorts. Now, for whatever reason, the linen I bought for these shorts, I just don't like. It's heavyweight and it has not worn well at all. It was kind of a washed blue color, but rather than looking more lived in in time, it just looks a little bit ratty, even though I haven't worn these that much. So because of that, like this really isn't my favorite project. I will say the fit is good. So for that, I won't put it in the bottom. Let's put it here in Exit the Red Carpet. Okay, we are down to our final three. Let's talk about this jumpsuit, which I'm realizing is the only jumpsuit I've ever made, which is kind of unbelievable. Um, it's a Zadie jumpsuit from Paper Theory Patterns. Amazing pattern, everyone loves this pattern. If you haven't tried it yet, you really should. So I don't even wanna pretend to debate where this is going. It's going straight to the top. <laughs> I love this project. The pattern is so great. It walks that line between being really effortless and cool, but looking really put together. And this layers so well. So, you know, I can throw a turtleneck under it in the winter. I can wear it in the summer. The fabric is iconic. It's this animal print fabric, so I love everything about this project and I feel like really stylish when I wear this out and I often get a lot of compliments when I wear this jumpsuit out. So absolutely love that. Lifetime Achievement Award, no doubt. <laughs> okay, second last is my coat pattern. This is the Oslo pattern from Tasuti made of this boiled green wool I got from Mood Fabrics, and it's fully lined in a kasha lining. Now, this was my first ever tailored coat, so I've got to give myself some props for that. It's definitely a vibe. I love the style of it, and I love the green color. It's so fun. It's definitely one of my favorite colors. I'm going to put it here because I haven't worn it as much as my quilted coat, and the hem on it is also a little wonky, which really bothers me. <laughs> I tried so hard to get a perfect hem and I don't know where I went wrong, but I still do wear it a lot and I definitely am so proud of this coat. Okay guys, last but not least, we made it to the final one. So this is my Heather blazer that I made this summer and it's made from a pink and white check fabric. And I have a whole video about this if you're interested. I think this is going to be a little hard to place. So it's hard for me to say this because I wish it wasn't true, but I really haven't worn this that much. I've worn it out a couple times and I got compliments on it, but I do feel like, again, it's a very summery blazer, but summer is boiling where I live. So there's kind of that dichotomy of like, when is the occasion where I would wear this? I knew when I was making it that the cotton was pretty stiff and it has a tailored look, but it, it doesn't have kind of the relaxed tailored look that a wool would give you. It, that bothers me a little bit. 
And I do like a boxy fit. Like I don't like anything close fitting when it comes to a blazer, but I think because this is both a boxy fit and it's stiff, it does look like very boxy. Okay, I'm debating where this should go. I think it would be unfair to put it in the middle because it's definitely a successful project. So let's put it up here in the It's a Vibe category. So let me take a second and rearrange the items in each category to get the absolute ranking and that will be our final ranking. Okay guys, this is the official final ranking. I've organized everything from best on the left to worst on the right within each category. So this is kind of the final ranking. Okay guys, what did you think of my rankings today in this video? Did anything surprise you? Um, or is this what you were expecting? Would you disagree with any of my rankings and place things in other areas? I'm really curious what you guys thought. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up for me. And if you like videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you here. As soon as I'm back in business with my camera and my computer, I'm going to be back to posting more videos again, but thanks for bearing with me while my technology is not playing nice. Okay guys, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.